Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to Ready, Set, Live. My guest today was seen in Bernie and the Dolphins 1 and 2, and he's gone on to star in the new Netflix hit series called Sweet Magnolias, Logan Allen. I'm so pleased to have him on the show today. Welcome, Logan. Thank you for having me, man. So excited. So, you know, Logan, when I saw your picture, you know, I, I, I sense people's energy and I just felt a good energy. And I, I looked at your film when you were a kid. I mean, you are you were a child actor, but there was an energy about you that was very sensitive. But I felt you were really in the moment there, which is very refreshing for uh, a young artist. And I think, you know, you have it. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think that's something that I, I definitely, you know, I try to be as professional as possible, you know, when acting in a film, and I really do get into that character. And it's so weird, because when I first started out, you know, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll try to get into the character a little bit. I wasn't fully in the character. But, you know, now as I've grown as an actor, you know, in Burning the Dolphin 1 and Sweet Magnolias, you know, I just somehow now I just can tap into a character and just go from there. It's so interesting. And it's just, it's so, so cool. But um, I love it, man. I, I love bringing a whole new, you know, energy to a, a certain character. You know what I mean? Um, and building him as himself, but also bringing yourself into that character. It's really, really fun. It's a really cool process. You know, when you started out, uh, I know you started out young auditioning for commercials and a lot of things. Was there a sense that when you, because you you have four brothers and sisters, so did you sense I want to be in the entertainment business, or what was what was the catalyst that got you motivated? You know, I never thought that I would be an actor. I mean, every kid wants to be on TV, right? That's like the dream. Um, but luckily, I got into the business uh, by a friend of ours, Erin uh, and her kids, and her daughter was actually an actress and still is. Um, her name is Gail. And she was like, hey, you know, your kid, I was like eight years old at the time. I was very young. And uh, she was like, hey, you know, your kid's cute. You should get him into the business. He'd do very well. And, you know, nobody in our family is in the business or industry. So we didn't know what we were getting into. So we weren't so sure about it at first. Um, but after talking and communicating and talking it amongst ourselves as well, uh, we eventually, you know, said, let's just give it a shot. Um, like I said, I was on board you know what i mean like i said every kid wants to be on tv i was like yes let's do it <laughs> um so i started out with like modeling you know and magazines and then uh commercials i did stuff like that and then it really kicked in when i did my first tv show that was back in 2015 so i was like 10 years old at the time and uh that was a really cool experience because i remember i was like oh my gosh this is huge like i'm gonna gonna i'm gonna be on tv like i'm gonna be on nickelodeon it was a Nickelodeon show called Lee in the Kitchen. And I was like, this is crazy. And I remember after the first two scenes, I fell in love. Like, I was like, this is so much fun. This is what I want to do. Like, it was just so cool. And and uh, with the first two scenes, they were, or the first two scenes at least that we shot were a lot of like action, you know, a lot of fun, intense scenes. And so I was just drawn in and I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is my passion. And I fell in love with it. Uh, on that first show. Yeah, no, I think it's so important. I mean, even when an actor is 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 excited about acting, um, I think you um, are excited about the passion of just working with people because it's really, you're actually learning uh, the art of acting by working. Yeah, without a doubt. And and you, you hit it spot on, man. That's my favorite part of being an actor, you know, is working with the people. Like, you know, I love, love working with people that I look up to. And, and I actually got to do that in Bernie the Dolphin and in Sweet Magnolias. On Bernie the Dolphin, I got to work with Kevin Sorbo, who is Hercules. Who doesn't love Hercules, right? Correct. So that was awesome. And I looked up to him and working with him was just a blast. And then in Sweet Magnolias, I got to work with Jamie Lynn Spears, who is Zoe 101, uh, Joanna Garcia Swisher, Chris Klein, all these people that I love as actors. So that was really, really cool. But another thing I really enjoy is is learning their styles of acting because everybody's style is different. Their approach to their character, the way that they approach the scenes. So I think I've, I've definitely learned a lot with each project because you, everybody has a different style. 
You know what I mean? So that was very, very interesting. And uh, I had a blast working with him. But yes, you hit that spot on, man. The people, like the people you get to meet, the people you get to work with, and you build these like really strong life time relationships. Correct. You know what I mean? With these people. And they really become a second family. So I really love that aspect. Without so a did you ever find, Logan, that when you were auditioning, was there, because you started working at a young age, did you find that there were moments that you were not disappointed, but you were going, darn, I wish I had gotten that or I really wanted it? Yeah, man. It, you know, when you first start out, you know, you don't know how much rejection is in the business. You know, you may audition 200 times a, a year and only get one or if that. So you have to learn how to deal with that, that rejection, right? And just kind of brush it off and say, you know what, let's move on to the next thing. What happens is meant to happen. That's kind of the mindset you have to have when in the business. But yes, I remember when I first started out, um, I was like nine, like eight years old or nine. So every time I didn't get one, I was mad, you know, I was like, oh man. Um, but you know, after a while and pretty quickly, actually, I learned that you know, you just gotta, gotta go with it and what happens happens. And you just, you know, have to have that mindset of, you know, it's, if it's, if it happens, it's meant to happen. So you just, and it's so interesting, you know, many years ago, I've done so many things in the business myself. I was an actor for a moment and I worked a lot. I did a lot of commercials and I think I did a couple television shows and I did the facts of life. I played Blair's boyfriend, but I remember okay. that I auditioned three times and you know what the key for me was that I didn't put any expectation of getting the role. I just went in and did the work. And I wasn't like, oh, I have to get this job. And there were other people in the room who I've, I knew from auditioning. And they were saying, oh, I, I just did two commercials. And I just did this movie and blah, blah, blah. So they're trying to psych you out. But yeah. you, I think as an actor, you have to really be in the moment and not worry about all of that stuff. And that's when you start messing up is when you do start worrying about that. And that's when things don't go your way. So yeah, man, you got that just dead on without it. And doubt. you know, what was interesting, Logan, what I've been able to view over the years, um, I was also a personal manager for actors and I used to be able to sign people that I felt had, had that it factor that you couldn't explain. And that's why I saw you and you have it. And not everybody has it, but um, I think what, I, what I've learned with young actors or actors in general, the ones that really delve into it and they study um, you know, on Broadway or they, they read Chekhov or they know Shakespeare, they can go on a set and be able to knock it out of the park because their instrument is so trained. Mm -hmm. yep. Have, have yeah. you have you have you thrown yourself into any kind of um, Shakespearean plays or read any of those at all? I definitely had read some, um, mostly for school. Okay, but, you know, after I read, uh, you know, Caesar and, and Julius Caesar, and after I read that one, I did start getting into that kind of stuff because, like you said, it does have the advantages, you know, with the acting industry. Um, so yeah, man, I definitely have, uh, started reading those a lot more and actually pretty recently. Um, and it definitely has helped me and not even as an actor, just as a, as a person, as a speaker, you know Correct. what I mean? Um, so yeah, definitely, man. No, because uh, for example, let's say you're up for, and, and this has happened, this used to happen for many clients of mine in the years, years ago, um, they would go up for a film and they would be playing the daughter of Robert De Niro and, I said to, to, to the client, I said, she, he knows every play on Broadway from Ibsen to, you know, uh, you know, Midsummer's Night Dream. And if you have a conversation and he throws that out and you don't know what he's talking about, yeah. there's going to be a blank look and he's going to go, well, she might not be such a great actress. She looks okay. She reads okay. But... I think this, the, the clincher would be if you knew the plays and you said, oh, I love the part. What did you play? You know, so that's why I say for young actors, it's so important to and you're so lucky because you're already working with great people on the set. That's mm -hmm. the other plus that's in, so exciting for you. And I'm excited for you because that is a that is you're in the circle. 
You're yeah. in the circle. So, so um, you know, I know you 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 live on a farm, and that yeah. must be <laughs> yes, kind sir. of refreshing not to be in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, that you can wake up with. What do you have? Cows. Uh, an- yeah, we have cows, horses, uh, chickens. We actually just had a bunch of baby calves Great. Um, recently. So we have like seven of those that we're, we're taking care of right now. But it is really nice, you know, uh, to kind of get away from all that and go to the, the peaceful farm where nobody's around. You, you know, you can just, just chill, relax, and just, you know, have a nice afternoon. I mean, you can sit out, out there in the pasture for hours, you know what I mean, just watching the wildlife. And, and we have – on the piece of property, we have, you know, deer, we have turkeys, really? we have all kinds of stuff out there that it's just, it's, it's amazing, man. And like I said, you can sit out there and just enjoy it. And it's such a cool lifestyle. And there's a lot of life lessons too, from that. You know what I mean? When you're working with and, and around these, these animals that are over a thousand pounds, you know what I mean? You have to be very aware, which helps you with acting, you know, being very aware in your scene, being aware of, of the presence of other actors and characters. And you just have to make sure that uh teamwork's a big thing you know what i mean you want to make sure you're working as a team because we do have to work the cows and make sure that their health is okay right so um and that's a big thing as you know you know chemistry is one of the biggest things in acting you know if two characters doesn't matter how good the actors are or how big the actors are if they don't have a good chemistry the show it's not gonna be that great right so um having that chemistry and that teamwork uh that you have to have on the ranch i think it definitely translates to uh you know to working in how have how has the family been in reacting to your let's say being successful and being on tv and in the movies you know they can't believe it because like i said nobody (laughs) in my family has ever been in the business or industry so it's something totally new you know what i mean and uh they're loving it man they are loving it uh (laughs) they're so funny like my family, especially on my dad's side, is so big. Like it's huge. Uh-huh. Um, so they they they're loving it, man. They um they're really excited. They're really happy for me, you know. And this is their type of of show too. You know what I mean? Like they love their little soaps and stuff. And and Sweet Magnolia is my newest show. Is like almost a soapy like type of show. So they're loving it, man. They're really excited. You know, like I said, this is something that they've never seen personally. Uh-huh. So they're loving it, man. Did you did you film Sweet Magnolias? Uh, where was that filmed? Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, Atlanta. Excellent. Great. Everything's happening yeah. in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. And uh, I actually I lived up by Atlanta for about seven months. Uh-huh. So I was very familiar with the area. So it was really, really nice. And I, you know, like I said, I'm from Florida, but I love Georgia so much and I already missed it. Like there's something about Georgia that I just, I love. I mean, I love Atlanta. I, I love the area. I love the city, but the countryside, like, yes. you know, Florida's just flat, man. We're just flat down here. We don't got nothing. So if you go up there, you know, you got the beautiful mountains, you got the hills. It's amazing. Um, so I really, really uh, do miss Georgia, especially, you know, during all, all this and during this time. So hopefully well, soon. next time you go to Atlanta, one of my best clients, she's the top luxury brand real estate but she actually was in a movie uh, that was filmed in Atlanta. She's not an actress, but she was in it. Uh, it was the Tiffany Haddish movie called the, uh, Like a Boss. And yep. uh, she's, she's just a really great person. She knows everything about Atlanta and any, any, anything you need to know, your parents t- uh, to know. Um, I'll have to hook you up because she's, she's from there. I mean, she's originally from Michigan, but she, she's from there, but Atlanta is, it has a, has an energy. I know what you mean. I, I lived yeah. there for a little while when I was younger. Um, and so did you find that there was any, any, uh, challenges, Logan, that you've had to overcome so far? I know it's, it's still, you're still growing and you're still experiencing a lot. Um, like acting wise, uh, just to, in you know overcoming something that you felt maybe um, I don't know that I didn't have confidence or I, I got more confidence from getting these roles or I never gave up or I I, I felt strong about uh, you know a belief if you have a belief system like a spiritual right. belief system about about your future. Yeah, you know I think my confidence has definitely grown. Um, and you know, on set, everybody was so supportive. And this is one of the best sets I've worked on with Sweet Magnolia's Netflix show. Everybody was just so supportive. And, you know, if you were feeling down a day, 
you know, a certain day they brought you right back up and um, they definitely boosted my confidence level. Not even, not, not just, you know, at, at that time, but really, you know, forever, like they've really helped me and I've learned so many life lessons and um, I met so many good people that have been through a lot. You know what I mean? Not just as actors, but as people. And I would sit there after the table reads and talk with people for, for hours, man, and just chat with them. And, and I learned so much, you know, I'm only 15 years old. I still have a lot to experience. Um, so they definitely opened my eyes up to a lot of different things. Um, like I said, both in like, you know, your actual life and in the acting world. Uh, so I think uh, my confidence level has definitely boosted, um, especially as an actor. And, and, and without a doubt, after Sue Magnolias came out, the response, like the fan response has been all positive. And they really brought my, um, my confident level up a lot. You know, the, the fans really have. They've been so supportive and, and so loving and so caring. Uh, it's been great. Excellent. Who, who has inspired you growing up? And, and it could be your family, your dad. Was there someone who inspired you, grandma, grandpa? You know, just really my family, my parents, my, my, you know, my siblings, my brother and my sisters, um, they, they, they're probably the most supportive parents because in this business, I know, you know, you know, if you're a kid, your parents have to be there for you, supporting you. You know what I mean? That's, that's with anything, any business, you know, if you have parents that support you and, and want you to, you know, um, you know, achieve your goals and, you know, work, you know, with your passion, then, then they're so good because not many parents will do that. Not many parents will sacrifice for you. Not many parents will, will be there for you and support you. But luckily my parents do. And luck, luckily my whole family does. And, you know, they're just, they're so supportive and I've always been that way. Um, so they definitely have inspired me. Um, and I really wouldn't be here in this position or be talking with you. Uh, without them so um, yeah i mean i think family. i think it's gratitude for the people that have supported us because there's some kids that don't even get the support ever no so how lucky are we seriously you know? it's it, it really is a blessing like you just said not every kid has that opportunity so luckily enough i just had the right people around me and that's another thing that's very important you know if you're wanting to achieve your goals and achieve your dreams you got to surround yourself by the right people you Correct. know what i mean you got to surround yourself by people that want to see you get there because people are going to want to drag you down you know what i mean so that's like one of the first things you need to do know who your real friends are know who your real supporters are and have them right by your side because that's how you get to the top that is a key point what you just said because in any business as we upgrade our let's say success you start to see um that the people that you thought were your friends maybe get jealous or that there's some kind of resistance and the people that you know really have been with you from the very beginning they never go away and i think it's so important to have your your posse around you that really support you even when you make it because this business can be you know and i think i've seen it over the years is the ego uh makes people fall and and that's the one thing i've seen with with just anybody in general you must always be humble. You must never become an egomaniac because the because the energy of the business will turn against you. Mm -hmm. And I think I think if you work with compassion and love, that everything in your frequency is going to attract that. And those people who don't support that will go away. And yep. I think you surround yourself and you're very lucky you have a, a very close knit family that will protect you, but that will always be your, let's say your guiding light. Yep. No, definitely, man. Like I, I'm so, so blessed by that. Um, it's been incredible. And uh, you made a really good point there. You know, they will keep your head on straight, you know, make sure that you don't get distracted by all that and just be, you know, continue to be the person that you are and, you know, not become something else. Correct. I also, um, uh, who would who would you like to meet or work with that you would say would be on your top 10 list? Man, that's too tough. Uh, there's so, so many. Um, I'm a big fan of, you know, like Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. Yeah, yes. there you go. Look at that. Perfect. Uh, David Spade, you know, his little group that he has. 
Uh, I'm a big fan of like horror films too. So anybody uh-huh. from like Heather Langenkamp to Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, those type of people it would be really cool. Um, I'm just, I, I'm a big fan of all that. There, there's so many, man. There and you know, so those many. people that you're mentioning, Jay, I've met Jam- Jamie Lee is an amazing woman. Uh, I've met all her family. It was so bizarre. I've met her father when he was alive and he connected with me and I met her mother at another function. And then I met Jamie. It was like a triangle. It was a spiritual triangle of, <laughs> of a connection. And I, I had the same feeling with each family member, but they didn't know that I knew of, of them in any way. So right. what's so great, I think, is when you connect to that energy and, and you put the intention, you're, you're, you're attracting like, uh, attract like people that you love. And you there will you go, work man. with those people, uh, Logan, you know. Um, I know Drew Barrymore was one of your other big fans. Yes, I uh, love Drew Barrymore so much. She used to go to my gym uh, and I would speak to her and she is so real and sweet. Yeah. And I met her when she was a little girl when she did um, uh, Close Encounters. Yep. And uh, I, I was at a big SAG benefit and she was a little girl and we were in the green room and she sat on my lap and she was so sweet, and 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 now she's, I mean, a mom, you know, she's a, an amazing, you know, woman, producer, actress, but yeah. it's just really great to see the uh, person evolve, you know, and I think mm-hmm. you're going to evolve great. I don't know if you ever have plans to direct, but I see you could be a great director. No, I do, man, and I just, uh, you know, if I'm not an actor, I still want to be in the business. If it's Absolutely. a producer or a director, you know, I feel like – that's what I love about acting too, is you get to work with so many different directors and see their vision because everybody has a different vision. And I love seeing that so much, but I definitely want to be a director, you know, or even a writer. I just want to be in the business because this is what I love and I'm learning more and more every day. And luckily I've like worked with a bunch of different, like, or worked, you know, acted in a bunch of different genres. You know, I did, you know, the fun, uh, you know, family films, Burning the Dolphin 1 and Burning the Dolphin 2. And then I worked in a horror show, creep show. Right. So that's a whole different thing. And then I worked <laughs> to Sweet Magnolias, which is like a hardcore drama. Right. You know what I mean? So I got to see like so many different things. And I know I'm going to keep on learning a lot. But it, every time I do a project, it, it just it makes me want to just, I don't know. I love it more and more each time. What was it like working with creep on in creep show? Dude, like I said, <laughs> I'm the biggest horror fan. So that was right. so cool. I got to work with like Greg Nicotero, uh-huh. um, who is the uh, on the you know the uh, executive producer for The Walking Dead. Uh, you got David Bruckner, who does some horror films, has a horror film on Netflix. I believe it's still on Netflix called The Ritual. I they're they're so so talented, and a bunch of the crew is from The Walking Dead, which I love the show. Um, so that was really awesome. But Creep Show, you know, was an old uh, you know film series back in the day, and I'm a big fan of those films. So you know them like you know re. I got, you know, I don't know if you call it a reboot, but uh, rebooting it into a horror anthology series was so cool. And just being a part of that was awesome, man. And it was so cool. And on that show, like you have uh, David Arquette, uh, uh-huh. Kid Cudi, all these people. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm actually like, you know, with these people, it was just, it was amazing. It was such a cool experience because, you know, I, I love horror because I think that's where the best camera work and the best lighting is. Mm-hmm. I think those are like the two best aspects and the score too of horror. So I really got to see that. That was a dream of mine to, to be in a you know, horror-based production. Um, and hopefully some more comes my way, but I, I had a really, really good time. Um, if you could go back in time, Logan, and speak to someone who's not here anymore, who would you choose and what would you say? Oh, man, that's a really tough question. <laughs> um, they, can, they can be anybody. Music, they could be a, a famous poet, they could be a writer, they could be an actor, um, anyone. You know what would be really cool? To actually talk like with Shakespeare, right? Uh-huh. And just see what his like i haven't read into him too much but just to see what his motivation was and what his like you know what what got him and what inspired him to do that you know what i mean yeah just like i think he'd be a really interesting person to sit down with i mean there's so many dude i mean you got you know abe lincoln would be really cool i mean there's just so many i could go on and on i mean there there, there's some awesome legends and, and icons out there that 
um, that will be missed. And uh, it'd be really, really cool. That could be a whole anthology series that you could write where you actually go into time to ask them those questions in this in each episode. Dude, that'd be awesome, man. <laughs> you know? Cool. Okay, yeah. start writing it. <laughs> that, there you go. I could see that. That would be so cool. Each episode, you would go back in time and have to not fix the situation, but you would find out what Abe Lincoln was doing, and you would be sitting there with him. And right. it, it would be cool. I think that would that'd be... That'd be awesome. Yeah. Be um, what, what, if you have any fear in life, what's your biggest fear so far? Any fears? Um... Let's see. Uh, I, um, I think my biggest fear is not not living up to my expectations. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Like I feel like there's always room for improvement, and no matter what I do, even if I'm in a film with Adam Sandler or Drew Barrymore or anybody, I I'm still gonna want more out of myself. And I'm scared I'm not going to exceed my own expectations. See what I'm saying? Yes. Like that's something that I, I think that's with everybody. That's on everybody's Correct. mind. Correct. But definitely mine. You know, I want to be in this business. This is my passion. This is what I love to do. So hopefully, you know, 10, 15, 30 years from now, I'm still, you know, acting or directing or writing. I just, my biggest fear is, is, is not living up to those expectations and, and not being in the Okay. Business. The one thing that I think is important to know is that, you are already a success. You don't have to prove to yourself. Yes, you're learning, but I think the key is to become authentically Logan and be the shiny light as if you as if you were already working, you know, in all those films and, and directing and writing. You would walk onto the set with a different energy. Or if your father was Steven Spielberg and you grew up in the business. You would just already feel there's a sense of everybody knows me. I don't have to prove anything. I right. am. And I think for anybody, I think the I am is really so important to not put judgment on, I have to try to, to live up to this. Because then if you don't achieve it, you're going to get depressed or you're going to get angry because you have such an expectation. Yes, we have goals. We have, let's say experiences that we have to experience but I think the key for you and, I, and I'll give you this advice because I've seen it just be Logan to the fullest don't worry about what they think about you because that's what makes you the shiny star that's what right. makes you stand apart from everybody else in the room and why they say this kid has something that we can't we have to buy it and, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, it's an energy also um, that we have to work on, you know, because everybody feels that they're not enough or that they can't seem to live up to their expectation of I need to be this by this age. And I think when you surrender at a young age and just be, and, and, and when we say be, the word beautiful also is be you to the fullest. So Logan is already beautiful. You're already confident. You're already uh, that energy, that light. And I think that will, that will make you move forward without worrying so much and just be in the art because I really feel you are a dynamic young man and that there are so many great opportunities for you. And I'm so inspired to see someone like you who has the ambition to continue to learn. It's refreshing. So... You are it. That's all I'm saying is you are it. Don't, don't, uh, you don't have to sell it. You don't have to try to be it. You are it. I really appreciate <laughs> that, man. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So the, uh, the other thing, uh, when you're on a set, how do you handle some of the pressure or stress? I know sometimes it can be stressful. Learn your lines and then, you know, camera blocking and then stand here. Do you ever find you just go into your dressing room and just chill or meditate or listen to some music? I do. Um, I just, I mean, my way of doing it is just talking with people. You know what I mean? Um, I'm still a minor, so I still have my parents or, you know, my mom or dad, whoever it is on set with me. 
Um, so my way is just to talk with them and just kind of get my mind off it because when you're acting, you know, you don't want to think too much about it. And I learned that pretty quick. You know, you don't want to think too much about something because then that will mess you up a little bit. Um, so it's always good to kind of refresh your mind a little bit, like you were saying, and that's just with talking with people. If it's, you know, the, the onset teacher or my parents or other co-stars, um, and just talking with them, uh, a couple of times I have put on music just to kind of get my mind off things, but mainly it's just talking with other people and just kind of getting away from all that and just talking, you know, maybe about the, the new trend or, or, you know, restaurants or something like that food. Um, but, uh, yeah, I definitely, I think my, my way of trying to get away from all the stress is just chatting and talking with people. What do you love to eat? Your favorite food? Listen, man, I like to eat. Oh, food's my thing. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think I'm a big Mexican food guy. Uh -huh. It's like tacos, burritos, all uh -huh. that stuff, man. Hot sauce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> love that. Um, without a doubt. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely tacos. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, so, uh, uh, you've got the, uh, Netflix, uh, Sweet Magnolias is, is currently on. It's doing great. Um, and we don't know, there'll be a second season, I'm sure. Um, let's hope so, man, because they end it on a pretty crazy note. Uh, there's a big cliffhanger at the end that uh -huh. we want to figure out as well. So hopefully, you know, there's going to be a second season. I mean, it's been in the top five since it's came out. Right. We were number one for like three days, which is just unbelievable. Like, you know, we, we you know, the, the whole cast and crew knew the show was going to be good and uh -huh. it was going to be big, but the top five and we're uh, this upcoming Tuesday will be three weeks in the top five. If we stay up there, which is just crazy. Like the fans, like, and all I've seen is positive and, and positives because one thing that's really special about the show is there's so many life lessons in it about relationships, about family, about love and about the community coming together as one. And I think that's something that a lot of people need right now. And Correct. I've actually, I've had people DM me saying, Hey, you know, this has really helped me during this time. It's been incredible. You know, thank you to you and the cast and crew. So it's definitely really helped me to just seeing everybody really enjoy it and see that it's making an impact on people's lives because people can really relate to it. You know what I mean? It appeals to all the adults and their story. And then you have the silver magnolias uh, is what they, they call them, uh, which are the L it's a very, very special thing that, like I said, a lot of people can, can relate to. Um, it's, it's just, it's a very special show. Excellent. No, I think the show is, is a dynamic family show. And like you said, it touches on relationships and love, which is so needed right now during this time. Um, well, thank you so much, uh, Logan. It's been such a pleasure to meet you and I look forward to meeting you in person. I think you're your your star is rising. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. And just thank you for having me on here. You gave me some great advice. I really appreciate that. Well, I believe in you. I think you're fantastic. That's why I wanted to interview you and spend some time with you. And thank you for taking the time. And we'll see you real soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Until next time, see you very soon and be happy.